staying right on schedule. We have the Emerald Fund and Mercy Housing. Let's welcome that team to the microphone, please, and we're off and running. Thank you. Tunnel was being burrowed through, and master plan resident parks were being laid out with curving boulevards, generous parks, and lush landscape. By combining nature with residential living, new neighborhoods like Westwood Park, Balboa Terrace, Ingleside Terraces created a hope for a better life. Reimagined for 21st, 21st century San Francisco, Balboa Gardens similarly is built upon three key concepts. One, abundant green space. Two, inclusive housing. Three, interconnect, interconnected communities. As our design team will explain, Balboa Gardens is a series of concentric open spaces, public parks, and radial streets that will bring neighbors in and through Balboa Gardens, thereby tying together the surrounding communities. My name is Mark Babson. I'm a principal at Emerald Fund. We are the market rate developer on the team. I'm joined by Barbara Guaco, head of real estate development for Mercy Housing California, the affordable housing developer. Emerald Fund and Mercy are local San Francisco housing developers. Our two firms have been building housing in San Francisco for over 30 years. In fact, put together, we've developed 2% of the exi total existing housing stock in San Francisco today. As this, shot, as this slide shows, we've worked in neighborhoods across San Francisco, north, south, east, west. We relish the opportunity to get into a neighborhood, understand its history, its culture, its values, and we work then with neighbors to shape a development proposal that's integrated with the existing community. Mercy's closest project is 1100 Ocean Avenue, just down the street. An Emerald Funds is on Alamany Boulevard, where we worked with a neighborhood of single-family homes to create 370 new homes plus neighborhood-serving retail. Our proposal includes 1,245 units of new housing. Up to 50% of those are even restricted. We have senior housing. We have family housing. Habitat for Humanity will be building some for-sale homes. And we also have housing for City College faculty and staff. Our proposal includes 770 parking spaces, 135 of those are dedicated exclusively for City College, up to 200 can be shared between City College and residents. We also have plenty of visitor parking. Our proposal includes five acres of publicly accessible open space, plus another 1.2 open space for residents for a total of 6.2 acres. We include a child care center and neighborhood serving retail. To tell you more about that, here's San Francisco native, Barbara. Thanks, Mark. Mercy Housing will have an active role in Balboa Gardens in four important areas. First and foremost is community outreach. Our team strongly believes that community input results in better conceived developments to better serve residents and neighbors. Mercy has direct experience in working with local residents and merchants in the planning of our Ocean Avenue family development that's pictured here on the screen. In working together on that development, we were able to co-sponsor with the Ocean Avenue Association a grant to the city to get funding for a street improvement program. In Balboa Gardens, we also want to partner with the engineering programs of Reardon High School and City College to allow students to learn by, by participating in the development of Balboa Gardens. Secondly, we will lead the development of family housing, affordable family housing on the site with a focus on serving families with children because our proposal includes many large two and three bedroom units. 
And here's a shot of our family housing at Mission Bay. Additionally, to further serve families is the provision of a child care center that will serve not only the children of Balboa Gardens, but the children in the surrounding neighborhood. Mercy has worked in San Francisco with many child care providers to do five child care centers in our mixed use development across town. To complement the family housing, we will be working on affordable senior housing to meet the great and growing need for senior housing in the city. Our senior housing will include services focused on health and wellness to allow our elders to successfully age in place. The provision of service-enriched quality senior housing is really an important part of Mercy Housing's mission. And we own and operate, manage 20 developments across town. And here's a shot of our senior housing at Mission Bay. And finally, last but not least, is our involvement in the retail. Mercy has leased about 50,000 square feet of neighborhood-serving retail across a variety of neighborhoods in San Francisco. We really focus on homegrown local businesses. It was really invaluable for us to work with the Ocean Avenue Merchants Association in developing our Ocean Avenue family development to come up with a retail plan that would really complement the neighborhood. And so to that end, we are really thrilled that we were able to lease to Phil's Coffee in sort of an important corner of our development to not only provide an amenity for the neighborhood, but to really add to the vibrancy of Unity Plaza. And there's, there's a shot of Phil's. So now I'll turn it over to our design team. Thank you. Thanks, Barbara. Can everybody hear me? Uh, I'm, I'm Ann Torney. I'm an architect with Methune. Um, I'm going to introduce the rest of the thank you, the rest of the design team. Um, with me is Scott Atafa. He's a neighborhood resident. He's here from CMG Landscape Architecture. Um, I have uh, Maura and Chris from Studio Vara, um, Owen and Virginia, who are from um, Kennerly Architecture and Planning. And, all of us have in common the fact that we've designed housing, affordable housing and landscapes in many San Francisco neighborhoods. And we, all of us consider, as designers, consider neighborhood discussion and neighborhood insights absolutely crucial to our work and, and really embedding it in place. Um, and we were, were very inspired by uh, the many, many hours that many of you put into crafting the design guidelines and recommendations that went into the RFP. We recognize that's a big time commitment. And we really hope that our vision of the site lives up to your vision of what can happen here. So in our vision of the plan, um, we have designed an interconnected, inclusive neighborhood. We've retained the access the access from City College, which is at the top of the plan, down through uh, to Westwood Park. Um, we have a number of uh, uh, routes that move across the site from Ocean Avenue up to up to here to uh, uh, Bishop Reardon and to Sunnydale beyond, including a, a, a greenway, um, a mid block Paseo, and the extension of V Avenue. And we have two diagonal streets that converge at the center of the height of the site at a 2.5 acre park, park at the center of the, the back. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Mark. Um, a park at the heart of the site. Thanks, Jan. Um, in addition to physical connections, we really want to create experiential connections for, for you and for this new neighborhood um, here at the Belleville Reservoir site. And uh, this is an existing view from Westwood Park uh, towards the east of uh, City College beyond. You probably know it well. Um, we are, um, I mean, the, the topography of the site is very challenging, and one of our first moves is to take the land of this berm and really evenly spread it across the site to reconnect all of the edges to invite people in to this new neighborhood. And we feel like we can welcome people into this neighborhood with a brand new 2.5 acre neighborhood park. This is that same view um, from San Ramon. The idea is that we would have, as a sort of centerpiece of the development, a commons where everyone can come together and recreate and meet their neighbors. 
that is really the uh, centerpiece of a whole network of open spaces um, that move, as Anne mentioned, eastward up towards City College, but also wrap the entire site with a perimeter greenway that forms as a buffer to the neighborhoods, but also provides really new, accessible pedestrian and bike connections throughout the neighborhood. And we really think this is a really wonderful opportunity to be able to live here, and you can walk and bike to transit, to work, to school, to the library, to groceries, to retail, for a night out, for dinner, without ever having to get into your car. And that's really an exciting opportunity and a really livable environment to live in. This is a view of the Greenway along the western side of the site the Westwood Park neighborhood is on the right of the screen, and this shows sort of generous landscape screening that we're providing, and this uh, bike and pedestrian network that passes patios and lively uh, spaces. That connects to the south of the site, to Unity Plaza, and we're really inspired by how active and vibrant the space is and the graphic quality of the paving. The thought is that we could connect this around behind the utilities, but behind Whole Foods, and make it a really active um, space. So we're thinking about how this greenway, which wraps the site, transitions from the edge condition. So along Ocean, it could be active and wreck, but along Reorgan and along Westwood Park, it's more passive and green. We also, the greenway connects you up to Lee Plaza, which is kind of the main gateway to the site. And this view shows that view uh, looking back towards the park with the uh, greenway on the left. So our, uh, so our vision for Lee Plaza is that it's a real neighborhood hub. Um, in this slide, um, what we've imagined is that the child, the entry to the child care would be on the building to the left with open space for the child care opening up onto that Unity Greenway facing south um, with affordable senior housing the building uh, and the building to the right. So this would be a place where uh, neighbors and residents would come through on their way to bars, on their way to school, grab a cup of coffee, um, drop their kids off at childcare, um, and it might have a character something like this. Uh, this is a, a, a building that Owen designed in Hayes Valley with housing over active ground floor retail, a very porous, transparent, and open ground floor with steps up to uh, mid-block gardens and play spaces. And in addition to um, building amenities and retail amenities, the the plan is full of landscape amenities for the new community. And we really think for our neighborhood to be terrific, it has to have vibrant, beautiful open spaces. That's where we get together to meet our neighbors, we share experiences, we run our dogs, we play, we exercise. Uh, we thought a lot about the kinds of programs that might work for this neighborhood, but this is really a first pass, and we hope to have the opportunity to work with all of you and find the right mix of programs and uh, spaces. This shows the, uh, the first pass of this kind of programming with a large, central, kind of open, flexible lawn in the center, the lower end, play spaces, group picnic, a dog play, uh, paseos that move through the site. And these are the kind of experiences that we would like to provide in this new neighborhood. That spectacular view to the ocean, we're proposing an outlook up at Lee Avenue that really kind of looks out to see the sunset and the El Rey Theater marquee. A dog park where you can grab a coffee and meet your neighbors and let your dogs play and mingle. Community gardens where young and old can come together and cultivate hyper-local produce, growing relationships as well as food together. And flexible neighborhood parks where families and children of all ages can come and gather and picnic, play, and recreate. Again, this is uh, a first vision of what this place could be, but we really think the open space is critical to having a healthy and vibrant social neighborhood. And we're really excited to work with you and to define that program more carefully. It's time. So again, we've got a number of question categories and themes that have come up. Uh, one of them with regard to the housing component, uh, how tall are the townhomes for one part of it, and then uh, the other question related to it, how many for sale homes did you envision in the project? For sale homes and how tall are the town homes? Oh, I'll talk about the tall. Okay. Right. So we have uh, we have uh, 
flexibility and we'll see how things evolve. We imagine that there will be both components, but, but we'll be working that out with, with you in the future. Okay, the other question asked, uh, I think different from some of the other proposals, where are the amenities for children and youth on the project as you envision envisioning? Sure. So there, there is a proposal to have a child care center that would likely be licensed to serve about 50 kids. We haven't totally figured that out yet. As well as there's all the, the open space will be, be provided in the building um, throughout the entire site. Uh, each development will have its own private open space that will have play areas for children, as well as we're proposing um, play structure in the in the open space at large for the for the public. We've also situated the child care center along the greenway that goes around the side of the property and it opens up to the southern exposure. So it's tied in with Ocean Avenue and it's a, a, a close link that's going to be nice and centered. One other thing is we, because there will be so much engineering and design work happening um, in, in this development, both Reardon High School and City College have an engineering program, so we thought it could be a great opportunity either to do mentoring programs, shadowing programs, to allow the students to participate um, in meetings alongside our design team and engineers. Okay, very good. Another question. Uh, how did you determine the number of parking spaces devoted to City College? Do you have any more details on the parking program in general? In laying, in laying out the parking, we have a two-level garage, and it made sense to give City College exclusively one level on one side, and then on the other side, it made sense to do a split split share parking. So it's just kind of the way the site laid out. It was a, a natural split. Okay. And then one minute left. We also question. have a question about the community engagement program. You talked about engaging the community and neighborhood residents throughout the process. Could you give any more details on that effort? Sure. So, you know, I, I think first and foremost, um, the way we approach community engagement is really to have, to start with one-on-one -on -one meetings with the important stakeholders that really form the perimeter of our property, our immediate neighbors. In this case, it would include Westwood Park, it would include Reardon, it would include City College, down to the Ocean Avenue edge. Then we sort of go out further to the community, the community groups, the neighborhood associations, and we get, begin to broaden um, our engagement process to the broader community. We certainly would want to hear from folks in, along the way as to who all those stakeholders are because um, although we know many of them, we certainly don't know all of them, and we would we would meet with those groups individually, one-on-one, -on -one, and go to broader meetings. Okay, very good. Our time period is up for that. Let's give them a round of applause once more. Thank you very much for staying to the end and covering all three presentations. It's extremely important to making this process work and to be fair and equal to all of the developer teams. So, there's a couple questions here about the actual physical development of the site. One is, is there a great change in the design as you proposed it? How will open space areas be maintained at good pace for those spaces? Again, what is, uh, I'll give you the list, what is the parking ratio for the uh, parking that's proposed? And the location of the parking, is it underground, above ground, surface, or in a structure, etc.? How many for sale units will senior facilities be accessible for people in the surrounding neighborhoods? 
and how do you get emergency vehicles into and out of the site. So I'm going to give the list of questions to our team and let them tackle that in the next five minute period. So Anne and Mark, uh, see what you can do. Um, I'm going to start with the first question, which is, is there uh, a great change in your design? And yes, we're, uh, we have a high side on the avenue, and that lets us actually bury the parking underground. Is that, there we go, that, that's a section uh, that looks disappeared. Um, so we're transitioning up. Uh, you can see the avenue there, and then the heights of our buildings step down as you move towards Westwood Park with the parking underground. So there's two, le two levels of parking there underground. So the upper, in the upper level of parking is for residents, the lower level is dedicated parking for City College and shared parking between residents and City College. Yes, and the, uh, the open space will be maintained by, uh, yeah, the CFDA, Community, Community Facilities District will be formed and that will, uh, will maintain all the parks um, uh, and the public open space and, and the streets paid for by the development. Um, how many four city units we don't know yet. There will be some, but, but we don't know how many. Uh, will the senior facilities be accept accessible for people in the surrounding neighborhoods? Sure, that's a, that's a great question. So um, they, certainly, they certainly can be. We would have to work with you to develop our marketing plan, but we have um, done affordable senior housing with a marketing preference for for neighborhood residents. So that would be something we would work through with you. Emergency, yeah, there's a question, how do emergency vehicles enter the site? You can see, so in this diagram, the blue are uh, streets. So that lets emergency vehicles um, circulate and they can, we can, and also on either side of the path uh, park, we would have a, a grass feet or something to allow emergency vehicles um, to reach the townhomes on the, Westwood Park edge of the site. How do you get a Sorry, could you repeat that? Uh, so the, the exit's out of the site, or is this corner here? Yep. Um, oh, that's, yes. We're proposing a the avenue uh, comes through, but also we're proposing a cross from Phelan right here above Unity Plaza. There would be uh, east-west streets. So there would be two east-west two east-west streets to access the site and the avenue. So we're trying to spread it out. So there's not. There's not uh, oh yeah, for, yeah. City College um, needs to owes oh, an east-west connection, so we're envisioning working with City College and getting an east-west connection. Okay, so there's about two minutes if you could finish so those are the big dominant questions. Sure, there. so one of the questions was the parking ratio, um, and I'm going to take a stab at that and some members, if I didn't get it right, uh, correct me, but it's uh, 0.521 for the oh, market rate housing, yeah. and, and 0 0.20 for the seniors, 0.25 for the uh, family affordable 0.25 for City College. Like, for, the, for the housing, for, the housing for educators. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, remaining questions on that list, if you don't mind to finish that off, please. Have you covered it? Uh, location, I think, yeah. we, I think we answered. Okay, very good. Once again, let's thank that team for their great work. Thank you. Thank you.